Hello everyone. Today I want to talk about creating the transition from a fender up to the wheel arch. Now here you can see I have a nice surface and I need to create that transitory surface from here up to here. Now there are several ways that you can create this and since this is an exterior body panel that's more than likely going to be sheet metal, could potentially be aluminum, still needs to be perfectly smooth, still need to have a G3 continuity. Now one of the things that I like to do is I like to use curves surfaces as references. Now one one beautiful thing about NX is that the um, shall we say what would traditionally be the non-parametric edits things like match edge, x-form and so on and so forth are now history based in NX so you can make really nice surfaces and have history with control point modification and uh, actual topographical modification. When I say topographical, I'm talking about the underlying surface. Now, first thing I like to do is let me go into curve and I'm going to project this curve down to this plane in this direction. I want to take that shape because I want to use that shape as a reference on this surface. I'm going to offset this curve and let's go to this face and reverse this and for this we'll just uh, we'll go right about 200 it's fine I'm just eyeballing it I don't have the actual clay or anything like that so I'm just I'm just putting in what I think may look good now that I have that in I'm going to project this curve back onto this surface along that same vector and reverse. So next thing I need to do is I need to create the surface that bridges from this curve over to this edge. So I'll go back into surface and there's various options that I have. I'll try studio surface first. Studio surface typically does a really nice job and with that I'm going to go in and specify my primary curve surface that is going to be tangent to or curvature to is there. I'm going to pick this curve as my next section and you'll see that it starts to get really kind of funky looking. It starts to twist and try to cram itself in. Well I don't want that to be curvature, I want G0. You can see that it does get kind of weird looking. I have these flow directions, maybe it's isoparametric or maybe it's per perpendicular. None of them really quite work out. What I would need to do is, you know, if I look at my alignment, there's my parameter, there's my arc length, there's my by points. What I would need to do is I need to trim away a portion of this curve here and here to get this shape in the way that I want. Well, I don't necessarily want to go through all that trouble. And the studio surface again creates an incredibly clean, clean surface, but there's a little shortcut that I like to use in such occasions. So uh, let me go ahead and hide this puppy. So the shortcut I like to use is under through curves. I'm going to construct this exactly the same way as I did before. I'm going to go from here to here. And what I want to do is I don't want to apply to all. I want G2 on the first one. The secret is under through curve, under alignment, I can use what's called a spine curve. For that spine curve, I'm going to use this projected, or I'm sorry, offset curve. And you'll notice that what happens is that it trims everything back to where the spine intersects both of those sections. It intersects this, intersects here, so on and so forth. Now, what I need to do is I need to adjust the flow direction. The flow direction is picking up how it flows from one surface to the next. And you'll notice that if I use perpendicular, it comes off perpendicular and comes in, comes off perpendicular and comes in, or I can say none. By saying none, it gives me more of just a straight shot going all, all the way across. Now there are limits to this. Again, this is a G2 continuity. So let me just simply trim sheet. I want to trim this to there. 
being is that it's a G2 continuity, let me go into my analysis. I'm going to go into reflection, pick that, hit my apply. You'll see that it looks pretty good. There's nice flow through this, but it's not as smooth as I want it to be. You can sort of see a little bit of, uh, maybe not, as, as I like to say, not perfection going across this boundary. This is an exterior surface. This is a shiny, very shiny exterior prominent surface on the vehicle. So we want to make sure that this is perfect. Now, that being said, what I want to do is I want to modify, let me just simply OK this, let me return to a shaded view, is I want to modify this so it is perfect flowing across to this surface. And the way we do that is, and this is, a, this is the little shortcut, this is one of those things I absolutely love about NX. Match edge. I'm going to take this surface and I'm going to match it to this surface. And you'll notice that if I come down here, I'm going to go in and reduce my patches. I'm going to go in and increase my depth. And you'll notice that a little message goes away. So what's going on is my G3 flow is now perfect. And everything else is well within whatever tolerance it is I want to have within that match. So I'm going to select OK. Now, when I look at this, you'll see that I have a much smoother transition going across. It's beyond G2. It is now G3. Another check that I like to make is go into Analysis. I'm going to go into Section Analysis. I'm going to pick these two surfaces. And I want to align this to a curve. I'll just say to that curve. And select OK. And you'll notice across this boundary, you can see it looks really nice. If I go down to this end, it looks really nice across that boundary. So that being said, I'm going to come back to this match edge. And I'm just going to simply turn that off. So I've su simply suppressed it. And you can see that it's G2 going across, but it is not perfectly smooth with the G3 curvature or the uh, acceleration. So this is the G3 acceleration and that's basically what it does. The great thing about this technique is if I need to, I can come in here now, I can grab this curve and I can make a quick modification to it. Maybe I wanna make that shape a little bit smaller and I get my updates quick and easy. And you can still see I, I maintain my G3. So I have a nice history-based method in which to generate my blend surfaces. So if I came in here and moved this again, get my updates, really smooth transitions. If I want to, I can come in here and there's my offset in face. I can just simply modify this to see what ends up happening. As you can see, it does an incredibly quick job of update and I have a very nice again set of surfaces that transition cleanly up to my wheel arch. So that's that's one little hint, one little tip. A lot of people get stuck. How do I start? How do I build something? How do I get something in quick and easy? And there's other methods. This isn't the be all end all. This is just one that I like to use. I think this is a really good way to go about doing so.